Um, my yeah. name is uh, Malcolm Robinson. I'm coming live from Winchester in the UK, in the sunny UK, as you can see. A bit bright here this morning, but it's a beautiful day. Um, and um, yeah, joining me today is uh, uh, for the second of these streams is um, Adam Lear from Next Edition. I'm going to talk a little bit about Next Edition, which is um, a remote production collaboration uh, platform. So um, we're, um, we've been looking at the last six months, so Adam and I have been looking at how do you do remote production on public internet is the first question. And also then, how does that work? So if people are at home on their desks, in their offices at home and things, uh, with no control rooms, how can that work? Well, we have a solution now and we've, um, we've been messing around. Hi Adam, how are you? I'm very well, thank you Malcolm. How are you? Yeah, very good, very good. I'm so, a bit um, Adam because is, um, I'm the directing at the same time, so <laughs> it's quite complicated. Yeah, the, the, joys of, uh, the joys of innovation and stuff, eh? what we let ourselves in for. So um, just to people at home, um, what we're doing here, we're actually broadcasting this through Next Edition. So what you'll see on your screen outputs is from Next Edition. Um, I'm live in Winchester. Um, I've got a little Dreamtrip camera in front of me. And we're streaming via Dreamtrip Barracuda, an SRT stream, or a number of SRT streams, into um, Malmo, into a virtual platform in Malmo. And Adam is sitting in um, his little house, uh, not so little house, in, uh, in Sweden. And he's working from his office, um, home office as well. So there is no control room. There is no um, physical issue with uh, distancing. In fact, we've definitely got the two meter rule between us. We've got about, about a thousand miles between us, I think. So, um, Probably um, more. That's what I say. Yeah. Um, so Adam, a little bit about Next Edition. Uh, yeah, so Next Edition basically is a, is a platform that allows uh, broadcasters uh, or anyone who makes wants to produce video, television, uh, a, a platform to remove all the complexity and the engineering and the, com uh, the difficulty of making TV shows. Uh, so what we've done is we've used microservices, we've used uh, web technologies, we're using private cloud. So we brought the private cloud into our Malmo base. So basically what's happening from your end is that you're streaming the cameras over SRT, we're decoding them and we're putting them into a standard vision mixer, a standard audio mixer. Uh, those two pieces of equipment haven't been virtualized very well yet, so we're still working with those. But everything else, all the transcode, all the uh, switching, the automation, the scripting, the media asset management, uh, the publishing, the streaming, the live streaming to YouTube that we're doing now, everything is managed inside one holistic environment through a single user interface. So uh, what the great thing about Next is that it takes us about a week to train an entire organization how to use it because the web technologies that we use are so simple that most people just pick it up like that straight away. So it's all about reducing complexity. Yeah, I can, I can guarantee that we've done a few training courses now and it, the simplicity is really good. Um, I can also control next from my house here. I've got a control screen in front of me here, so I keep looking at here. Um, so it's just, it's, it's, it's an enabler, isn't it? It's a, it's a way of getting that story across really easily um, for our end customers. And, and um, you know, this week we've had a bit of an adventure. Um, we have. Between Adam and myself. <laughs> um, um, so someone approached us about... Um, um, Women of Football Club in the UK were, they moved out of their ground a number of years ago, a very sad story in the, in the English um, football world. And they went and played in various grounds and um, a bunch of fans all pulled together and um, have been petitioning for a number of years now to rebuild the Wimbledon AFC Stadium in Plough Lane. And we got approached about whether we could help them out a bit and see if we could do a bit of a fan programme for them on YouTube. Um, and uh, this is a little clip of, uh, of what's happened. Ten years in the making of this new home for Wimbledon. That's so late! That was exciting. <laughs> it was. More exciting than the day, I think, wasn't it? Um, so, you know, the whole thing, I mean, what do we do TV for? It's all about enabling um, people to tell stories and the, the simplest way of doing that. So, um, you know, that, this is what we've been trying to set up, the, 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 the quickest way of, of getting broadcast going. So from a broadcast solutions point of view, we work with a number of partners. So um, as Adam mentioned, we had DreamShip, SRT encoders. Um, literally, we were broadcasting from the terraces. 
Um, so at Dreamship, we have bar barracudas. We had a mobile viewpoint bonded cellular link doing a, a roving camera around the ground, putting in B-roll for the footage. We went live for an hour and 45 minutes on YouTube prior to the game. Due to broadcasting restrictions, we couldn't do the game itself. But prior to the game, hour and 45 minutes, um, with uh, a few ex-players, we had um, probably about five or six people coming up to join the, the live show. Uh, really great stuff, um, pre-recorded video going into it. Plus also some really, really good Twitter harvesting of real fans getting on the engagement straight away. Lots of local, really, really good interaction with um, with the guys. And Adam was there pulling up the Twitter stuff. And you know, this is where Next Edition really took its place because it was really quick to get stuff going. Um, quick example of some of the um, um, conditions we were working in. Here's a little short video I took on the day uh, for the little setup. So here we are, uh, Wimbledon on um, Wednesday, Tuesday morning, um, just before the game. And you can see we set up here. We've got our little uh, all our encoders and um, all the, uh, the feeds here. You can see a bit of temporary installation as always. Uh, this is our uh, studio control room. A couple of cameras, in fact three cameras. We've got two, two little cameras here, mini cameras here. We've got a return video coming through just so you can see what's going on here. And we've got another little, so this is, uh, this is Charlie down here. Just getting ready to show and getting ready for stuff. You can see we're still preparing, but it's all prep stuff. And we've got a third little camera just up here. Just hiding in the game way, just there, in a mini camera. Do a little wide shot of the ground that's there all the time. This is the new ground, just to give you some idea of what we're doing today. Women and AFC coming back to their ground. Uh, yeah, there we go. So you can see there, it was, um, it was very much a, a building site we were working in. Um, that didn't show the mobile viewpoint barricade, um, mobile viewpoint um, agile units we're using with a little Sony FS7 to do around. Got the players coming in the tunnel, you know. And it was a really, you know, it's, <laughs> I think Adam was um, sweating a lot at his end, um, <laughs> but at our end it was, um, you know, a real. Literally, we were broadcasting from the terraces in a building site. The ground wasn't quite finished yet, but they played the first game on Tuesday evening. So he drew two all, I'm afraid. But but it was great to see. What really hit me was we were there with true die-hard Wombles, as they're called, the, the Wimbles. Wombles of Wimbledon. The Wimbles of Wimbledon? The Wombles of Wimbledon. Wombles of Wimbledon. Um, <laughs> um, and that's the fans. And they, the, the emotion that people were saying, a lot of the guys were watching on their phones and stuff at the ground. The emotion for people was great. And that's what it's all about, that storytelling element. Um, so I had the yeah, easy part, really. I was at the ground. Poor old Adam. Adam was stuck yeah. in, uh, in his basement. But um, um, it'll, over to you, Adam. What did you get up to? Yeah, I, I think the thing the thing that was interesting was when you talk about the storytelling, I mean, this is a story that would never have been told if we didn't tell it. Um, and the fact that we captured it, we even sent out the mobile viewpoint to get the interview with the manager in the post uh, match show as well. You know, I mean, we were doing we were doing really high end stuff and there was only three of us. Uh, so there was Malcolm on the ground engineering, uh, Charlie doing the production and me back here, Malmo doing the directing. Um, and, and what struck me about that was that the three of us only had two days preparation. So we threw this thing together out of nothing and, and out of equipment that we just had because we just had to use what we had. So Malcolm had some demo equipment and I have a demo system we've been working on together. Um, yeah, so on that note, Adam, just quick, quick, quick yeah. thank you while I'm here, actually. So quick thank you to Zenheiser for the microphones, which we borrow for the show, and for Trilogy, who have lent us the comm system, which we, one thing we talked about there, the comm system inside a production system is so important. It was and amazing. The comms was amazing. Really. Yeah really works out well there so that was really good and obviously dream chip mobile viewpoint we've got our demo system any, anything else. so sorry Adam, back to you again yes i saw the thank you stuff right okay <laughs> so i'm just going to do a little desk tour so on the day i actually filmed uh, my desk here so you've seen what it was like at the stadium end so what was it like at this end the important thing to remember here is that we're next the the private cloud servers are in malmo i'm here in my home which is maria home which is 45 kilometers away from malmo so so i'm actually operating the uh, switches and all the audio, the automation and uh, talk back here and everything through this touch screen. Uh, and then all the signals are coming into Malmo as well. So all the heavy lifting is just left in the data center at Malmo. And I'm just telling it what to do remotely 45 kilometers away. So let's uh, let's take a look at my desk. OK, so we'll start with the we'll start with the main part of my desk. So here this is my whole next system here. So this is actually the rundown for the show. Um, I'm just uh, partially rehearsing it. We've got uh, quite a lot of VTs in here. Uh, some live shots, obviously, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, we're going to be stepping through this rundown uh, during the actual show itself. Uh, just to the right of that here, I've, I've actually got um, on my laptop. I've got the Next Edition. Uh, uh, plug-in for Premiere Pro running. This is actually uh, giving me the same access to the server 
uh, but I can see all of the clips that I got in the main system, but I can actually pull them in here if I need to edit them. So I can actually get, uh, I've got a direct link effectively to the, uh, to the next server that I can then bring into an edit timeline and edit a piece in case I want to push something back edited while the show is taking place. Um, finally, on this side here, we have uh, the multiviewer coming back from Malmo. So the system in Malmo is actually playing that back on the multiviewer. So if I was to, uh, for instance, just take uh, uh, these videos here and I just play one of those videos, you'll see I get it straight away over here. Um, so we're going to be running, you can see we're running graphics, uh, real-time graphics on top. Uh, we're running the VTs, the cameras. The cameras aren't there yet because they're not up. They're just the boys are on the way to the ground now to set the cameras up. And finally down here, this is my shot box. So on my shot box, um, normally I'd take up the whole screen with that. Uh, but you can see here I've got the buttons for my cameras. So I can easily cut between my cameras here. I also have all the buttons for the external microphones. So this is basically how I will turn on the audio microphones for each of the uh, sources. So if it's uh, if it's on camera one, I can turn on both uh, two mics for left and right on camera one. So I, we can have two uh, talking at the same time. So I have audio there. I can switch cameras here quite easily. So I push the button and I'll get the camera. Obviously, I don't get the camera. I just get the VT. But uh, and we've got things like uh, super sources. So I can pull up uh, like a DVE butterfly shot here just at the touch of a button. Um, we're also overlaying a graphic there from the sponsor and also the Wimbledon logo there as well. So uh, so it, it's all being controlled here by the short box. I can also see the TX output here. I can also see the multi viewer actually here in the short box so I can preview that. And finally down here, I have a small uh, virtual panel for a Trilogy um, system. Uh, this is what we're gonna be using for talk back. So I can actually talk uh, either directly to our engineer on site, or I can actually talk to the presenter here or listen to the presenter. I've got four IFBs effectively with mix minus on. So I've got all the right correct comms coming back to me here as well, which I'm gonna be listening to and talking to obviously on my headset here. So all in all, this little setup here uh, with just one person is going to be what's running uh, the whole of the uh, the gig. Now, the thing to bear in mind is that all of this is in Sweden. This is in my basement pub in Sweden. So um, it's uh, the signals are going to come back to Sweden from London, and we're going to cut it, and then we're going to send it to YouTube direct. So it's going to be interesting. So wish us luck. I'll tell you I what, think one of the I'm interesting parts look... there, Adam, as well. <laughs> one of the interesting parts there is... Uh, it's all on it's all on public internet. There's no dedicated fibers yeah. here. It's all public internet. And just the guys at home realize, um, I've got exactly the same control system on my laptop here in Winchester. So I could also run the show from Winchester if I needed to at that point. So yeah, and one of the down. interesting I, things I just, about that, Malcolm, is um, is when you're talking about private cloud, because when you have private cloud, you have a direct connection to the server, which means that you have the shop box, for instance at your house there in Winchester, and I have the shop box here in Malmo, but because we both have a direct link to that server, we can both actually turn things on and off live if we want to. Um, yeah. I, I mean, when I look at that clip, I'm like, you know, it, we did a demo the other day and somebody said to me, it's like something from the future. And I said, it is, <laughs> yeah. but it's shipping now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Point. Yeah, get your POs in, we can supply it now. No problem it's, at all. Yeah, it's yeah, shipping we're proving now. It proving it here now in front of everyone's eyes as well at the same time so um, yeah but one good. of the things that was really fascinating i thought was you know the highlight for me at least was how we brought the fans in so um we'd asked the fans with a graphic to tweet to the uh, twitter feed of the club uh, videos we asked them to sh short videos to respond to how they're feeling and what they're doing um, and then we drop those into a template. Uh, and I've actually got a little uh, screen uh, video that I took here that I can just show you how that is. So this is the user interface for next edition. This is actually what it looks like. Uh, you can see to us, uh, we're harvesting on an FTP harvest these, uh, these tweets coming in. And these videos, basically, uh, it doesn't matter if they're horizontal or vertical, Next can cope with that, obviously, because we deal with social media. So what I'm going to do is just build a new script, because uh, <laughs> what I want to do is to, to demonstrate roughly how you would make a template. So uh, what we want to do is just create a media placeholder. So this is just an empty reference. It says there will be a video here, but I do not know what that video is going to be. And I can set up some parameters for that. So for instance, I could say, okay, let's do a mix of 15 frames on this video. You know, Do I want to set a fixed duration so they're all going to be the same? Well, we'll probably cut someone off, so we don't want to do that. So once I've set all of that up as I exactly want it, for instance, what I can then do is once I close that up, I can actually pick it, uh, uh, I can set auto manual. I keep forgetting about the auto manual because 
so the uh, I can automatically fall into the next video. So that what I want to do is I copy paste that now. And what I'll do is I'll create an automatic fall through to the next video at 15 frames. So we're kind of making an edit here. It's like an empty edit of placeholders. And when I drag drop those things in, uh, they will just play concurrently and look like an edited piece. But actually, it's been nowhere near an edit suite. It's just playing out the clips that have come in off the FTP directly. And we're using a, a system of transcodeless uh, playback where we don't render them. If the playout machine knows the format, recognizes it, does some tests and says, yes, I think I can play it, it will play it. And here you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to set this to be a, uh, a master. So I just renamed the top up here. So I'll call it something. I'll call it the Twitter thing there. Just type that in. And then I'm going to create a master. So when I do this, I will create a template. So uh, I just turn the master tag off. And you can see when I push the plus to create a new something in the templates, there's, there's no Twitter thing there. OK, so I just push the plus off here. And I just turn on next master and now plus and boom, I've instantly got this as a template. So I can create as many of these as I like, as many times as I like and populate them and they won't affect each other. There'll be no crossover between each one. So let's just uh, let's take one of those. And let's grab a fan video. So uh, We'll use maybe this one. Oh, I didn't take the clip. There we are. So there's the uh, there's the actual template now. So this is a fresh template, brand new. We just drag these in. Remember, these are coming in off the FTP, so they're coming from Twitter. We drag them in, drag them in. This is what we were doing on the night live while we were on air. Uh, during a VT, I would set that up, and then we would take the uh, story. That's the rundown that's live. So we would take the story to put it into the rundown. So we go find the story, which is over there, and drag and drop it in. And you can see all four clips are there. And then let's hit go. Uh, the plow lane just holds a really special um, place in my heart. And it's wonderful to be gone through the whole experience again. Um, so you can see what we're doing here is we're now just playing out these videos that were coming in live as they were played. Really right play and the beauty of that is that we had a, a team of people who were checking the videos to make sure they weren't no, over the top and you can see our broadcast on their tv in the background behind them which is quite mad so hey you know, from the usa that's here. actually congratulations on the from move the back usa to they came from all over uh, the place watching the game uh i'll just cut out of that for now but i mean well world famous was, wombles the world famous wombles yeah it was amazing the fans are amazing and of course we brought them in and we made them part of the story because because of covid nobody could be in the stadium you know and these people were really uh sad about that so we we brought this show to bring them all together and we did that and, and we succeeded in that with with very little uh, effort on, i would say on our part i don't know if you agree i think i said to you at one point malcolm this is getting a bit too easy i'm feeling a bit, a bit... Well, it is when we, we sat there literally we got given a, a power supply and a, a, an internet connection at the ground um, in a building site um, and we went live from it you know um, live but i think was a, a very very professional out output and it's a very good go to avis afc wimbledon website there is a stream up there you can have a look at some of the output from it um mm -hmm. and here and there so um, you know, and it was literally a show from the terraces, literally. So, but I think, you know, we talked about this earlier on a little bit. It was an enabler of getting that grassroots football clubs, grassroots, and any sort of sporting club or any um, a team event or anything. People want to get stuff out there. This is what we can do for people. SRT streaming is really, really great. You need something at the end of it. It's a combination of the whole system together with a really, really good collaborative platform to work from. And Next, Next is really providing that solution. Um, and I think, you know, Adam, you've you've been a great star for the last six months of you and I trying to get this all up and running and, and ready to go. And I think today is proof that this works from multiple locations um, without control rooms, COVID friendly. Um, it's all there. And just, just just a quick note, I mean, we have now got a full next demo system set up for broadcast solutions worldwide. Um, if anybody wants to um, have a go with this and try it and uh, we can provide encoders, so you can stream from your own venues or we can set up some cameras for you as well. We can set this up for you to have a go. Um, you can try try the, the GUIs, try the platforms out. Um, we haven't even touched a fraction of what Next can actually do this morning. Not even close. Nice. Given time things. Um, you know, normal hour, a demo takes about an hour and a half um, and it is so powerful um, and, and, and flexible as well. But also it's so easy to use. That fully integration platform is fantastic for how it works. And, I'm I'm just a, a, an engineering person who can make it work, so it must be pretty easy, um, <laughs> uh, guys. So, um, it's um, and the future, yeah, that, it, it's it is it's the future that uh, I think what what it, you know, what I've been really impressed with with Next is the fact that it integrates so well with the social media platforms. 
You know, it's where it's, that's what's happening now. The stuff you just showed there on Twitter and things, and the fact we're broadcasting live to a YouTube channel. It could be any other channel. It could be a, a Instagram Live. It could be anything. Anyone, anyone wants to. It's, it's simple to do. Um, yeah, I mean, and I with minimal even, latency as well. Yeah, I can even cut, for instance, right here, just on the short box. So I can cut to you there, and then I can cut to me uh, here. Yeah, just so, to share live is yeah. And just, it, to just to everyone knows, is, Adam, yeah. Adam is basically and it's, this is a Zoom interface. Um, it can also be Skype, whatever. It's basically it's a, a, a online platform interface to to the system as well. So showing that um, you know the system is out there, very flexible. You can see we're having a two-way conversation on, uh, on multiple locations, multiple latencies, yeah. without any real issue. Um, great. So. Um, Adam, thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, That's all right. Thank you, Malcolm. Demo, anybody's interested in a demo of Next or even to have a real live um, to go with it and, and try it out for a period of time, we're very open for that as well. Please get in touch. Um, it's To me, it's I think it is one of the best innovative products out there at the moment. Um, don't be scared of it. Get involved with it. Have a go with it. And we'll see you very soon. Thanks very much.